Even though verb ing modifiers do not function as verbs, since they denote an action, they possess the characteristic of tense. The timing of action represented by the verb ing modifiers is equal to the timing of the main clause. For example, in this sentence, performing on stage modifies Mary. Now the main clause verb takes place in the past and hence the action of performing on stage also takes place in the past. As you can see, the context of action of verb ing modifier is set by the action of the main clause. Similarly, if the main clause is in present tense as in this sentence, then it implies that I am stating a fact that I typically see Mary when she performs on the stage. In future tense, it implies that in future I will see Mary and she will be performing on the stage. Now if this sentence is stated as I like Mary performing on stage last week, then the author intends to state a fact that he likes Mary and this Mary performed on the stage last week, that is in the past. Thus the actions take place at two different times. This is not possible since the action represented by the verb ing modifier always takes on the same tense as the main clause action. This can be corrected by changing the verb ing modifier to relative clause as I like Mary who performed on stage last week. Thus whenever verb ing modifier is used always make sure that it makes sense for the timing of this modifier and the main clause to be the same. If the timing has to be different, then either the verb ing modifier must be changed to relative pronoun modifier with the correct tense, or the main clause verb tense must be changed to convey the intended meaning. From our knowledge of modifiers, we know that they must be placed and worded appropriately for the sentence to make complete sense. However, there are certain grammatical nuances that we learned to be able to identify modifier errors in more complex sentences. When verb ing modifiers appear with comma after the clause, they modify the complete clause. When they appear with comma before the clause, they can modify either the complete clause or just the subject of the clause. This depends on the context of the modifier. Now when verb ing modifiers are not separated from the clause by a comma, then they always modify the preceding noun. Note that this is a very important difference. So whenever you spot a verb ing modifier, always pay close attention to the comma to determine what the modifier is grammatically modifying. Then determine if this modification makes sense. Now verb ed modifiers always modify the closest noun without any exception. You may now click on any of the buttons to continue.